Hello, hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. We're going to start very soon. Yeah. Good morning, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. We're going to wait for people to join. We will start soon, soon, soon. How are we all doing? How are we all doing? Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God is good, God is good, God is good, God is good. Praise the Lord. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. Amen. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Good evening on Facebook. Good evening on Instagram. Thank you for joining. My man, Shala. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Yes, yes, we are about to start. This is Heart Set Apart. Um, it's, a, it's a movement that God placed in my heart to... Um, to do and which is pretty much to uh is based on the scripture uh i believe it's first corinthians 6 17 uh that talks about being um come out from them and be separate and that's where heart set apart vision was birth um god bless you chris oh bro yo you got my message you didn't reply <laughs> yeah 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 but yeah i'll be expecting your reply been a long time, Mr. Chris. How are you? When worshippers meet. <laughs> God bless you, sir. But yeah, um, so that's, that is what Heart Set Apart is all about. And um, we will just wait for a little bit for people to join. And we're going to be talking today about the topic, the fear of God. Oh my goodness, that's, that's an awesome topic. The fear of God, the fear of God. The fear of God. So if you uh, know anyone, um, your friends, please share the link. Um, that's on Facebook, on Instagram. Thank you also for joining. Thank you, Itoro. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Okwe. That's my cousin for joining. And on Facebook, thank you, Charles, for, for joining. So yeah, we're going to start with the topic, the fear of God. The fear of God. That's a that's an amazing topic. That's a topic that actually reminds me of who God is, um, the fear of God. And if you can just drop a note on what you think or what you believe the fear of God is to you, um, that will be awesome. The fear of God. What is the fear of God? What is the fear of God? Last week or last two weeks, we talked about intimacy with God. And now we want to move further. Um, I'm sorry for some people, um, for, for those that couldn't get back to the video. I don't know what happened. It got deleted, but praise the Lord. Um, but yeah, we talked about intimacy with God, and now we're talking about the fear of God. And if you, if you really, really notice, you will see that they are actually in line with each other. Because you cannot have the fear of God without a connection with God. You cannot have the fear of God without knowing who God is. And um, we will start by explaining who God is. But before we do that, I want us to pray. Father, we just thank you. We just give you glory. We give you honor for today. Thank you for another amazing time in your presence. Father, as we discuss about who you are, about, about, about the fear of God, Lord Jesus, we ask for your revelation. We ask that you will speak to us yourself. Uh, it's not about me, but about you, Lord. I'm just a vessel. I pray that through me, oh God, your people will be blessed tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. The fear of God. Hmm. Interesting topic. If you know what the fear of God is, please post it, like I said, and um, God will bless you. So, what's the fear of God? 
First of all, I think we cannot discuss about the fear of God if we do not have an understanding of who God is. Having an understanding of who God is explains better what the fear of God is. Now, I'll give a scenario before we before I go further. I'll give a scenario. Um, so, you think about your your um your your father my father my biological father now there is a relationship between me and my father okay and that is he is my father i'm his son and my father gives instructions my father gives instructions to me his son and he expects me to follow those instructions. Now, when he gives me those instructions, he's not giving me because he just feels like. The most important thing or the most, the most important reason why he gives me those instructions is because he loves me. That's my father. Now, he, 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 he instructs, he rebukes, he gives me all these instructions based off of the foundation, love right so before we can establish what fear of god means we need to establish the love for god and it is because i love my father and i want to make sure that i please my father that is why i am that is why i respect whatever he tells me okay god bless you jason for that definition the fear of god is the fear that we may hurt god by the way we live because we reverence and love him god bless you god bless you yeah so because i love god and because i love my biological father when my father says don't do this my respect and reverence for him now this is not because i feel like you know this is a dangerous thing to do let's let's take let's take it of that yes it is a dangerous thing to do in the first place but i mean what he whatever he says you should not do that you do when you do it that's a dangerous thing to do right but most importantly the reason why i will do what my father says i should do is because i love him it's because i want to please him and when i do there's a reward the same thing with god the fear of god should not be birthed from a place of anxiety or 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 nervousness you know the fear of god should be birthed from the place of love for god so i have my definition you know the fear of god first of all fear of god is a test of your love for god if you the bible says if you love me god says if you love me you will keep my commandments it's so simple if you love me you will keep my commandments Okay, now, it's the, it's the test of your love for God. How do I know that? When you love God, you know his heart. You know what he wants. God, we need to understand something. That God is a holy God. That's number one. You know, the Bible says in Exodus, it said that, it said that, um, the Bible says in Exodus, when, when God called Moses, God told Moses, God said, God said, this is a holy ground. He said, take off your shoes. This is a holy ground. That was the instruction God gave Moses. And so understanding the holiness of God brings the fear of God into you. And Moses understood that, yes, I am on a holy ground. You see what I'm saying? So understanding the holiness of God is what really brings about the fear of God. The fear of God is reverence, respect, and honor for the things of God. Walking in his ways. Some scriptures talk about that. When you, if you go to Deuter Deuteronomy chapter 10, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 10 from verse 12. The Bible says, he says, and now, and this is God speaking to the people of Israel. And now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? It requires only that you fear the Lord your God. Sometimes I wonder, how would you say you have the fear of God in your heart and you can and you are able to, 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 to do evil or to, to sin? It shouldn't happen in the first place. 
And so reminding yourself of who, of the holiness of God, makes you to stay away from sin. That's number one. So it says, he requires only that you fear the Lord your God and live in a way that pleases him. How will you live in a way that pleases a holy God if you don't stay holy? You see what I'm saying? It says, and love him. We talked about love. Fear is birthed from your love for God. He says, fear the Lord your God and love and live in the way that pleases him and love him and serve him. So it requires a lot of things. It requires service to God. Fearing God requires the love for God. It requires, it requires serving God. It requires not just serving God, but serving God with the whole of your heart and soul. That's what the Bible says. It says, serve him with, your, with all your heart and soul. It now says, and you must always obey the Lord's commandments. You know, I love to read, you know, these books, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. It talks about, you, you can easily tell what really happened with the, with the children of, of, of Israel and God. If you, if you notice throughout the Bible, right, the word fear, fear of God was repeated over 300 times in the Bible. And that tells us the, the, the importance of fear for God. Now, the only fear that is permitted in a Christian's life is the fear of God. Every other fear is not permitted. The only fear that is permitted in a Christian's life is the fear of God. How do I know that? Now, the worldly fear. Now, now when, when we talk about fear, we're not talking, we're not, there's a fear of that comes from anxiety, that comes from, oh, what's going on? That's not the fear I'm talking about. Fear in the real sense, no, no, not the fear of God now. Fear, just fear on its, in its own. You know, the Bible says he has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power, of love, and of sound mind. But fear in itself should not be permitted in a, in a Christian's life, except it's the fear of God. But now let's talk about the fear itself. Fear is the absence of faith. Okay? Fear is the absence of faith. But the fear of God, the fear of God, right? I'll put it this way. Fear is the absence of faith, but faith in itself is the presence of the fear of God. It's just simple. Fear is the absence of faith, okay? But faith is the presence of the fear of God. How do I know that? Let's go to Proverbs. I believe it's a uh, Proverbs chapter. There's a scripture in Proverbs that talks about um, how. Do we, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, Proverbs. 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 We're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. The Bible says, yeah. The Bible says that. I think it's Proverbs chapter. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Okay, when I get the scripture, we'll talk about it. But yeah, there's a scripture, there's a, there's a passage in the Bible in Proverbs that talks about the, 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 the fear of God brings strong confidence. And so, that is how I'm, I know for sure that faith is the presence of the fear of God. When you have the fear of God, it builds confidence because you understand God. You understand that this, this is what God wants. We read a scripture that talks about walking in the ways of God. When you fear God, he, he pushes you to walk in the ways of God. And so, you are doing everything, right, to please God. Yeah, it's Proverbs chapter 4, verse 26. Let's look at it. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 26. I'm going to read it for you. Proverbs 4, 26. Proverbs 4.26, Proverbs 4.26. And if you, whatever God, God you know, <clears throat> has revealed to you about the fear of God, please feel free to post it. Feel free to share it. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining. Ken, Ken Rollins, my man. Um, Kemi, thank you. Ose Burnett, thank you so much for joining. God bless you. Kofo, 
God bless you. God bless you. God bless everyone that has joined. Jacob Lemox, God bless you. Um, so yeah, Proverbs chapter 14, rather. Um, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 26. Where is it? Where is it? Now listen. It says, those who fear the Lord are secure. He will be refuge for their children. Some versions say, those who fear the Lord have strong confidence. And that's what makes me know that faith is the presence of the fear of God. But fear, that's the fear of the things of this world, is the absence of faith. Am I making sense? That's the difference. So faith is reverence. Faith is respect. Faith is honor for the things of God. When you honor God, you would obey his commandments. I gave an example of my father. The relationship I have with my father is as a result of my love for him. And when my father says, Israel, don't do this because I love him, the fear of the fact that I don't want to offend my father makes me to not do that. Does that make sense? Now, I said, the fear of the Lord is reverence, respect for God, understanding his holiness. God is not wicked. So when you think of the fear of God, don't think of, oh, God is weak. Oh, the things that he did in the Old Testament. You know, God is, no, 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 no. That's not who my God is. God is a merciful God. Yeah, he's a lion and a lamb. He doesn't, if you do his commandments, is what, that's, that's the requirement. However, Jesus came that we may have access to him. And so the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. So we have access to God. However, that is the more reason why we should remain focused on heaven. Knowing the heart of Jesus, knowing the heart of God, creates that fear for God. The problem, I said, the problem now is that most people now, now, now let's 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 go to the to the scriptures. Let's go to Philippians chapter two, verse twelve. I want to show you something. Philippians chapter two, verse twelve. Philippians chapter two, verse twelve. Philippians chapter two, verse twelve. It says, "Dear friends." Now, this is Paul. Okay, this is Paul talking. It says, dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. He says, walk hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Some scriptures say, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling. You know, it, it, it's sad that some of some people have misinterpreted this scripture. This fear is not to create nervousness or anxiety in you. No. When you talk about working out, let's talk about your physical body. When you work out your physical body, the whole point is that you want to see results. You want to see, you want to keep fit, right? You want to do it well. Okay. Now the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Meaning, having an understanding that when I do this, God is not happy. So the fear of doing that keeps me away from doing it. All right? And now the Bible says, and Paul said, Their friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more important. I talked about I talked about your love for your father. When you love your father and he gives you an instruction, right? And then you go to school. And the instruction he gave you is about something in school, right? And you remember the instruction your father gave you. What happens? You're like, "No, I'm not going to do it because my father said if you do it, here is what's going to happen to you." So I am not only doing it because my father is not here, but because I respect the instruction of my father. Paul is saying here, when I gave you that instruction, I was with you. Now that I'm not with you, remember that God is seeing you. God is omnipresent. If you are able to sin 
if you're able to come to church and say, oh, you have the fear of God, you're not going to, you're not going to allow sin into your heart. And then you get to your workplace and that sin becomes comfortable enough for you to do it. You don't have the fear of God. The fear of God instills a lot of discipline, instills correction in your heart. That is the fear of God. That is the fear of God. When you stand strong and you believe the word of God concerning an issue and you stay holy and you stay pure, that is the fear of God. It says, and now that I am away, it is even more important. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling, obeying, now listen, obeying God. Obeying God with deep reverence and fear. A lot of us have become so comfortable in our sin. And that has thrown away the fear of God in our hearts. I challenge you today. I challenge you this, this evening. What are you doing with your walk with Christ? Who is Christ to you? Who is Christ to you? We explain who God is. The Bible says that God is a holy God. Right? Let's go to Philippians chapter 1 verse 11. I'm going to read something to you. I want, to, I want us to understand. Now, we can't, we can't say we have the fear of God if we don't really understand God. So first of all is understanding the word of God. Okay? Philippians 1 verse 11 says, it says, May you always be filled with the fruit of salvation. Right? The righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. For this will bring much glory to the praise and praise to God. The Bible talks about the righteous character of Jesus Christ. If we look at Philippians chapter 3 verse 9, I just want to explain who God is. Who God is. We need to have an understanding. Philippians chapter 3 verse 9 says, And become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous. I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. There are several scriptures. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 11 verse 44. Leviticus chapter 11. Leviticus chapter 11. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 44. Thank you Easy Life for joining. God bless you. Leviticus 11 verse 44. 44. It says, now listen, it says, it says, for I am the Lord your God. This is God. I am the Lord your God. You must consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. So do not defile yourselves with any of these small animals that scurry along the ground. The Bible says, I am holy. You must be holy for I am holy. Do not defile yourselves. A lot of us, a lot of us right now, what we are doing is defiling ourselves. We submit to our flesh. We don't, you don't submit to the Holy Spirit. You don't let the Holy Spirit take control of your entire being. The Bible says, be holy. So when you know who God is, when you know when you know the holiness and you understand the holiness of God, it makes you stay away from sin. Now I have I have I have about nine points here that I'm gonna that I'm gonna list out to everyone. What happens when you fear the Lord? Nine points about what happens when you fear the Lord. Number one is that you are blessed. When you fear the Lord, you are blessed. How do I know that? Psalms chapter 128, verse 1. Psalms 128, verse 1. You know what? Let me use this. This is better. Psalm chapter 128. Psalm chapter 128, verse 1. Psalm 128, verse 1. Psalm 128, verse 1. Psalm 128, verse 1. How do you know? Number one factor, I said, 
Oh, God bless you, Sam. God bless you, Sister Edwards. Blessing. God bless you for call, for for joining. We're talking about the fear of God. Now I say, how do you know what happens? How do you, how do you know that you have the fear of the Lord, right? What happens when you have the fear of the Lord? That's the question. One twenty Psalm one twenty eight verse one says, "Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in His ways." God bless you, sir, Mr. Sam. Now, the first thing that happens when you fear the Lord is that you are blessed. It's a blessing. The Bible already says, it says, blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. Part of fearing the Lord is walking in his footsteps. Part of fearing the Lord is doing everything to please God. So number one is you are blessed just imagine this is the promise of god not me i didn't i'm not the one that pronounced it the bible said it so if i want to be blessed then why can't i just fear god you will be blessed blessed is the one who fears the lord period that's number one that's amazing right number two i said what happens when you fear the Lord? You are encouraged. You are encouraged to live a holy life. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Let's go there. God bless you, uh, Micah, for, for, for joining. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. It says, and I read, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Are you listening? Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. Amazing. So I said, number one, you are encouraged to live a holy life. God, when God says, let us, let us cleanse ourselves, you know, Walking in the fear of the Lord comes with sanctification. You know, when Paul said, walk out your salvation with fear and trembling, he meant, you know, let us go through this process of obedience and sanctification. Obedience and sanctification. Part of sanctification is being set apart, cleansing yourself from all form of filthiness. Let me tell you something. This world is full of filth. Oh my goodness. This world is full of filth. The Bible says, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness. That is when that is what happens when you fear the Lord. It says, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. When you make Jesus your standard, you don't need anyone to tell you to live a life of holiness. You don't. It comes naturally. Because what you think, what God thinks is what is what, what you think is what God would have done, or what Jesus rather would have done. Always ask yourself, what would Jesus do in this position? That is what shows that you fear the Lord. If you fear the Lord, you will honor his word. You know, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the, is, is, the, is the beginning of wisdom. And the preceding verses talks about having the knowledge of the word of God. When you understand the knowledge of the word of God, you know God's instructions. And you know what to do and what not to do. You know, when God gave the, Israel, the Israelites all the, the Ten Commandments, he also said something about the fear of God. And we're going, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. But yeah, the second point what hap about what happens when you fear the Lord, I said it encourages you to live a holy life. Like we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse, verse 1. Number three, what happens when you fear the Lord? Number three, it is the beginning. You see, the moment you say, I, I fear the Lord, and you actually do it, right? What happens right there? is that you begin to know the mind of Christ. You begin to do things with the knowledge of Christ. Now, it says, it's the beginning of wisdom. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7. 
Proverbs chapter one verse seven. I'm gonna I'm gonna make I'm gonna make it clear to you. Proverbs chapter one verse seven. Um, Proverbs chapter one verse seven. Thank you for joining, um, El Noel, my, my 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 boy. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Janet. Thank you, Ebenezer Elo. Thank you, Ify, for joining. God bless you. Please share the link. Um, Proverbs chapter one verse seven. What happens when you fear the Lord? That's what we're talking about. Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 says, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, I'm going to read from verse, I'm going to read from chapter 1. Because I want us to, I mean, sorry, from verse 1. I want us to understand something here from, from verse 1. Verse 1 says, okay, the Proverbs of Solomon and the son, Solomon, the son of, of, of the king of Israel to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive instruction of wisdom. Um, yeah, to receive the instruction of wisdom, to understand the proverb and enigma. The fear of, now the beginning says, the beginning says, to know the wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. So how do you want to 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 apply the knowledge of the word of god if you don't have the fear of god the bible says it is the beginning of wisdom there are some scriptures in proverbs actually i just don't i don't I, I, there's there's no time to go in details into it but there are some scriptures in the bible that talks about that talks about wisdom and that that makes us understand that we need to have an understanding of the word of god before anything, fear of God can even come into play. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the application of the knowledge of God that you that you know. Knowledge you can know any you can. I mean, knowledge is just acquiring and understanding about something, right? But wisdom is the is the application of that thing. So when you begin to apply the word of God in your heart, that instills the fear of God in you. When you begin to take up the word of God seriously, every, everything that you find in the word of God is a promise from God. It's inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so whatever you take into practice is applying the knowledge of what you know. That is the wisdom. So the fear, when, when, when Paul talks about fear and trembling, it's a continuous process. You're continuously cleansing yourself. You're continuously applying the word of God in your heart. The Bible says it is the beginning of wisdom. Let's go to uh, Job. Job chapter 28, verse 28. I'm just giving you scriptures to make you understand, you know, this, this point better. You know, um, Job chapter 28, verse 28. Uh, Job, 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 Job. That's before sound. Job chapter 28, verse 28. Now, what does it say? What does it say? What does it say? Let's read. Let's read, guys. Job chapter 28, verse 28. It says, And to man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Does that make sense? The fear of the Lord is wisdom. The fear of the Lord is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. You see how in how how connected they are. You can't leave one and hold on to another. You can't have wisdom without having a knowledge of the Word of God. What, what are you applying? And you cannot have the fear of God without knowing the Word of God. Next point: it keeps you away from sin. We just talked about it. The fear of the Lord keeps you away from sin. I talked about my father. I gave that example when we started, right? For those that are just joining. Thank you, Joel, for joining. You know, when my father says, Israel, don't do this. Easy. Do not do this, right? I will stay away from that because I had an instruction. And so the fear of the Lord makes me stay away from evil makes me stay away from evil. When, how do I know that? Exodus chapter 20, verse 20. Exodus chapter 20, verse 20. 
Let's go there. Let's go there. Exodus chapter 20, verse 20. And Moses said to the people, now this was after God gave them the Ten Commandments. God gave Moses the Ten Commandments. All right? He said, and Moses said to the people, do not fear, for God has come to test you. Okay? And that, and that his fear may be before you. Now, remember he said, do not fear. That's different. That's not the fear of God, right? Do not fear. Don't be afraid. This fear that I'm about to present to you is not the fear that should make you anxious or, ang or, or, or nervous, okay? Because this is the fear of the Lord. Now he says, do not fear, for God has come to test you that his fear may be before you so that you may not sin. So I said, it keeps you away from sin. Earlier on, we were talking about what the fear of uh, wh who God really is. So when you have that understanding, you know, you know, what to do and what not to do. But I have it here that it keeps you away from sin. I want to ask you a question this afternoon, this evening, sorry. Do you have the fear of God? God is everywhere. So don't say, oh, it's only in church that I, that I know that, ha, ah, that's where God is. No, sir. God is not a Sunday God. He is not a Sunday God. He is a God that is omnipresent. He is a God that is all-powerful. He is a God that is amazing. God is everywhere, so you cannot hide from God. You remember the story of Adam and Eve? When they discovered they had sinned, what, what did they do? <laughs> they tried to hide. But guess what? You cannot hide from God. You cannot hide your sin. The Bible says that whoever keepeth his sin shall not prosper. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. The word of God said it. God bless you, Joel. Yes. It's very needed in this season, this time that we are in. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's very, very, very crazy the kind of things that we see in this world. And that's because a lot of us have lost the fear of God. A lot of us have lost the fear of God. Where is the fear of God in the church? The Bible says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Do you love God? Do I love God? That's the question. Now, this is not just... The fear that I'm talking, that I'm saying, oh, God is, God, if I sin, this one will happen. No, 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 no. I'm not talking of that kind of fear. Ah, God, God, no, 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 no. Because really, if God should come, if God should say, for one minute, I just want to show myself. You, if I, I mean, Moses, God, God, God told Moses, he said, if I, if I just show you a little bit of myself, you will die. <laughs> because you cannot, you cannot just cope with it. You understand what I'm saying? So that's not the kind of fear I'm talking about. I'm talking about the kind of fear that, that, that reminds you, that reminds you, that reminds you to keep living a life of holiness. We have lost it. So many of us, even in the body of Christ, we have lost it. The fear of God, where is it? The Bible says, whoever covers his sin shall not prosper. So what are we hiding? Just confess your sin. And say, God, I'm sorry. You know what? God is loving. God is loving. I keep referring to this scripture about working out your salvation with fear and trembling. The fear that is mentioned here right is 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 good fear <laughs> amen you understand what i'm saying the bible says that now let me talk about something real quick the bible talks about perfect love casts out fear right the bible talks about perfect love casts out fear that fear is the fear of judgment so that's not the fear we're talking about that fear is the fear of condemnation but the love of Christ has cleared that away. We are redeemed. Okay? And so that's that the love of God casts out that fear completely. Perfect love. 
So people people sometimes tend to 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 misinterpret that scripture. That's not the fear we're talking about, actually, in this case. But I just wanted to point that out because we're talking about love and fear also. Okay? But yeah, where is the fear of God in our hearts? In our hearts, where is the fear? Ask yourself. I'm asking myself the same question. That whatever, if I say that I am white here, I am white also outside of this place. I'm not black. Some of us, you are blue in church. And at your job, you are red. Nobody even knows that you're a Christian. You don't stand your ground. You don't stand your ground. Anywhere... Anywhere light comes in, anywhere there is darkness, right? And light comes in. Darkness has to go because darkness cannot comprehend light. They don't, they don't merge. So wherever I find myself, I keep telling myself consistently that I must reflect the light of God. I don't care if I have to lose friends. I must be that light. The Bible says we should be the light of the world that they may see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. That is the kind of fear I'm talking about. The fear that pushes you closer and closer to Jesus. This, the fear that draws you closer, that, that makes your relationship with God more and more intimate. We talked about intimacy with God. That is the fear I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Blue in church and red at work. No, that's not the kind of life God wants. God wants a heart that pursues him, that bears fruit. The Bible says that even the branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that we can bear more fruit. So it's a continuous process. We are walking, walking, doing everything. The Bible says to deny yourself, your flesh daily. It's not deny myself once in a week. No, bro. It's not deny myself on Sunday. No. It is deny myself every day. Pick up your cross and follow me. That's what God said. I didn't say it. God said it. So where's the fear of God? Where's the fear of God? A lot of us are comfortable in our sin. And guess what? It's because you are no longer sensitive to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says whoever is born of God does not continue to sin because there is a seed. I'm just paraphrasing. There is a seed that is in him. That seed is the Holy Spirit. And so if you have a, the Holy Spirit inside of you, it should not make, that, that should push you to, to always live a holy life. That's what God is saying. There is a seed in you there's a Holy Spirit in you. The seed in you should produce fruit. Where is the fear of God? The Holy Spirit is the one that reminds you. The Bible says that you, Jesus, when Jesus was ascending, he said, he will give, I will give you the Holy Spirit who will teach you, who will guide you. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit instills correction. So the fear of God is not just, oh, God will punish me. Uh, that, that's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying here is I love God and I want to respect him and I want to honor him. There are things that you cannot do when your father is there because you respect your father. So why do we do it when God is, when, 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 why do we feel comfortable doing it? Because we don't see God or because you think God is not there? No, sir. God is there. God sees you. It's time for us to repent. It's time for us to call, cry out to God and say, Lord, we are sorry. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Hold on to God. If you don't have a relationship with God, there is no way you can even understand how he thinks. There's no way you can understand his instructions. The instructions of, the, of God are in his word. The Bible says he honors his word even above his name. His instructions are here, but how many of us follow it? Where is the fear of God? Number four, or number five, what happens when you fear the Lord? I said, 
The fear of God causes you to obey his instructions. I already mentioned that. It causes you to obey his instructions. Number six, the fear of God instills correction. How do I know? Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 9 to 11. Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 9 to 11. We are about we are wrapping up Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 5 to 11. Oh sorry from verse 9 to 11. I read. It says, "Furthermore, we have we have had human factors who corrected us and we paid them respect." Right? Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and leave they it says for they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them and he and he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness all right now no chastening seems to be joyful to the to the present but painful nevertheless afterward it yields to peaceable fruit of righteousness for those who have been trained by it now this was talking about okay now, humanly speaking, I'm sure there are many, there are people that you fear all because you know what they will do if you mess up with them. I talked about our parents. You know what your dad will do. I come from Africa, right? And I know what my dad will do to me if I disobey him, humanly speaking. But how come it's God now that we don't now respect? That's what he's saying. He says, it says in verse 9, it says, Furthermore, we have had human fathers. We have had human fathers. Okay? We have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and leave? How come it's now God? How come? We, we, we respect our own, our own elders. We respect our father, our mother. Why is it God that you don't respect? So, the word of God, the, the fear of God instills correction. When God corrects you, how do you respond? How do you respond? The fear of God. It's my prayer. It's my desire that the Lord will help us all. We are all a work in progress. Every one of us. It's a daily process. It's a daily process. You know, I'm just paraphrasing here, but the word of God, we know that the word of God corrects, rebukes, you know, chastises. The word of God disciplines us. But how do we respond? Do you, do you correct that thing and you still go back to it? That's lack of the fear of God. That's lack of the fear of God. I'm not talking about honoring yeah, it's good to honor pastors and everybody and, 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 and elders in the church and everything. It's good, right? It's very good. But you know that there are a lot of us that actually even honor God, uh, honor our pastors even over God himself, the one that created those pastors. Such that it's because your pastor is there, that's why you're doing it. That's why you feel like it's a sin. But once your, your pastor is not there, it's okay. Who are you deceiving? Who are we deceiving? We're not, we're just deceiving ourselves. We're just deceiving ourselves. But what will I do regardless of whoever is there? Paul told the Corinthians, he said, examine yourself whether you are still in the faith. Don't do it because I am here. All right? Because a lot of them were, were, were living in deception. They were, they were deceiving themselves. They only did things because Paul was present. Okay, how about when I'm not present? Do you still remain in the faith? That is the fear of God. He says, examine yourself whether you're still in the faith. Not because I'm here. Not because your pastor is there. No, but because you honor God. That's why you are obeying him. It even boils down to our service to God. You know that, right? Some of us get upset with our pastors you know, oh, they don't see what I'm doing in, 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 in church. You know, you know, we talked about it, right? 
that the fear of God also is about your service to him. Your service to God is selfless. Don't think about yourself. All right? So it's not because my pastor is there, that's why I'm serving God, or that's why I'm serving in the church. No, I am serving God because I love God. So if my pastor is not there, that fear for God, that love for God is still intact. That is what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So number seven, we are wrapping up. Number seven, I said, what happens when, when you fear the Lord? It makes you more like Jesus. You know, even Jesus himself always referred to his father till he died on the cross. He always had, the Bible says that Jesus was one with his father. We talked about that two weeks ago, intimacy with God on this, on this um, program. Jesus himself was always in tune with his father. He showed honor and respect to his father. Some of us don't even respect our parents. So how can you even respect God? When the, God, the word of God itself said, honor your father and your mother. You see what I'm saying? So how can you be like Jesus if you don't have the fear of God? How can you be drawn to holiness? When the Bible, the Bible says, be ye holy for I am holy. That's what the word of God says. So how can you be holy if you are not walking according to his footsteps? If you are not wanting to be like him? The more I relate with my father, the more of the traits of my father that people see. Why? Because we have spent time together. We talked about this also in intimacy with God. Jesus and, 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 and his father were one. The Bible, the Bible talks about it, John chapter 10, verse 30. He says he was one with his father. So if I'm one with my father, if I'm one with Jesus, he makes me more like him. And he, he, creates, the, he creates in me the fear, the respect, the reverence. Fear in this, in this situation is not nervousness, like we said. Fear in this situation is your love for God and to see things done right that pleases him. Fear of the fear of God is walking in his ways, in his footsteps. We talked about it in the Bible. He talks about it in the Bible. He says walking in his ways to be like him. That is what I'm talking about. Number eight. Okay, I, I, I said number eight. Well, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12 to 13. I think I mentioned it earlier, but let's talk about it. What happens when you fear the Lord? Deuteronomy chapter 10, from verse 12 to 13. Deuteronomy chapter 10, from verse 12 to 13. It says, I'm going to read from verse 12. Yeah, 12 and 13. So it says, and now Israel, now I read it before, I'm, I'm going to read it again. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? Number one, but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in his ways. I talked about it, being more like Jesus. To walk in his ways and to love him. So what happens when you fear the Lord? Number one, you walk in his ways. Number two, you love him. Number three, it says to serve your Lord, your God. I talked about service. Number four. It says to serve your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with everything that is within you. You don't serve God because you want this and this. I mean, do you love because you want something? We're talking agape love. We're talking unconditional love. The Bible says nothing will separate me from the love of God. Not death, not height, not whatever. You understand what I'm saying? Nothing. But you serve God selflessly. So he says, to serve the Lord of your God with all your heart, that's number four, and, and, and with all your soul, that's number four. And he says, and to keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command you today for your good. So I've stated four things in there that the fear of the Lord produces. Number one, walking in his ways. Number two, loving him. Number three, serving the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul and keeping his commandments. 
obedience obedience that's one attribute that abram had abram obeyed because he feared the lord the bible says that everywhere abram went everywhere abram encountered the bible says that he built an altar and called upon the name of the lord he built an altar Abraham's fear for the Lord built his obedience to God. You know, God is always speaking. God is always instructing you. But do you listen is the question. A lot of us say, you are praying, you are praying, you are praying, you are praying to God, you pray to God, you pray to God. But God doesn't respond. God, I mean, you know, nothing happens. But do you ask yourself, did I hear what God instructed me? A lot of us do a lot of praying, but we don't do a lot of hearing. We need to get to a point where we ask God for the grace to be able to hear what God is saying. Because God is speaking. Excuse me. God is giving instructions. So, the last one, number nine. Number nine. Number nine. Number nine. I said, what happens when you fear the Lord? It gives life. Hey, how? Do, why do I say that? He gives life. The Bible said it. I didn't say it. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 19. Proverbs chapter 19, real quick, and we'll be done. Proverbs chapter 19. The Bible says that the fear of the Lord gives life. Wow, you never knew. Let's check it. Let's check it. Let's check it. Let's check it. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 23, it says, The fear of the Lord leads to life. The fear of the Lord leads to life. And he who has it, will abide in satisfaction oh my goodness even to live long to have life to have a a a a a a a, 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 a great a satisfied life the fear of, you need the fear of god i didn't say it though the bible is the one saying it he said he will not be visited with evil i need to, let's check another 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 version the bible says he will not be visited with evil he will not be visited with sickness. You know, sickness is of the devil, right? Sickness is not of God. A child of God should not be sick. Period. Because we, you have light. Sickness is darkness. I'm going to read it from another scripture so we understand. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 23. I didn't say it like I said. The word of God says that the fear of God gives life. You want to live long, have the fear of God. I'm reading it from NLT now. He says, the fear of the Lord leads to life, bringing security and protection from harm. Some of us wonder, why, do, why, 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 why did I have this slight accident? Why? 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 Why, God? Why? You didn't check your life to see whether you are actually... The Bible says that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There is protection for everyone who believes. And who has the fear of God? I didn't say it to. The Bible said it. The fear of God leads to life. Bringing security and protection from harm. It is my prayer that everyone that is listening to me today. Leaves this place and says from today on I will plant the, the, the word of God in my heart. That I may not sin against you. I will have the fear of God in my heart. I will love God with the whole of my heart. That I may have life. I declare and decree for everyone listening to me today. That the more, as you live here, you begin to ponder on these words. And this brings about fear for God. Fear for the things of God. Now, like we said, this fear is not a fear to make you scared. No, the Bible says he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of, power, but of power of love and of sound mind. So this fear I'm talking about is the fear of God that you need, that I need. And I pray God will bless us in the name of Jesus. I just want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for everyone listening to me. Lord, I declare and decree, Lord, that every fear that is not of God goes away right now. But Lord Jesus, you will bring your own fear, the fear of the things of God, the, the fear of God, the, the love for God, the love for the things of God, the, the grace to walk in your ways. You will bring into the hearts of your people in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. 
God bless you all. And I pray for anyone who is not saved yet. Just say after me, Lord Jesus, I receive you into my heart. I pray that you will come in and dine with me. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all for calling in, for, for joining. Deborah, Sheyi, Isaiah, God bless you all. I really, really appreciate you. And God bless you. See you again in two weeks. Amen. Bye.